give me some examples of that, of when, you know, you would go, okay, well, this is a hormone related issue versus maybe a straight mineral deficiency that's coming up in the serum. Yeah. One of my favorite ones that actually has been coming up a ton lately is potassium and sodium balance. I've been seeing a fair amount of my clients who, you know, maybe stage five, late stage four, and they've got, you know, moderate high potassium levels, like, you know, five, four to five, six, and then kind of lower sodium levels. And of course they're getting conflicting information and, and their blood pressures have kind of been bottoming out. And so it caused me to take a deeper look in like what's controlling these and we hear a lot about that angio renin the renin angiotensin feedback system and a lot of times it's easy to forget that you know the different blood pressure medications they're specifically working on different hormones in that system mm-hmm. and one of the common ones like lisinopril it suppresses aldosterone levels and that causes a lot of what kind of I've been describing is those moderately high potassiums and those really low sodiums and then kind of their, their blood pressure bottoming out. And no one's thinking about, well, you know, this blood pressure is, you know, further pressing down their aldosterone too low. And they keep trying to make adjustments with their diet, but they're not successful, especially with the potassium. Like they're usually way under eating on potassium for that. And so that's a really good example of let's consider a medication change. Let's consider, you know, what hormone pathways are being affected here rather than adjusting the diet. 